our regulars, Harvey Corman, Vicki Lawrence, and Tim Conway, Pete Matz and our orchestra. Our special guest is my very dear friend, the wonderful Miss Betty White. <laughs> just love her on Mary's show. Oh, she's so evil. <laughs> that sweet thing with the dimple, she can get away with more stuff. Yet, yeah, uh, let's turn up the lights. See how you are. Anything you want to say or what? Yes. We like to come to Hollywood to see all of the stars and things out here. Where do you like to go for your vacation? Where do I like to go? I, I walk up and down Hollywood Boulevard looking for the stars. <laughs> But you know, I was raised in Hollywood. In fact, Hollywood Boulevard, I lived a block north of Hollywood Boulevard on Yucca and Wilcox. And I lived, and my grandmother and I used to go to four movies a week. Not one time did I ever see one movie star on Hollywood Boulevard. You just don't see them. Have you ever, have you been there? Yes, we've been Did you see anybody? Yes, see what I mean? <laughs> Place find them is like to go to Chagrin Falls, Ohio. Yeah, they hang out there. There's a clique. And they, they go, that's where Tim got his start. Yes. They say you see them at the unemployment office. At the unemployment office. <laughs> You're absolutely right, yes. Who's your favorite actor? My favorite actor is Anthony Hopkins, an English gentleman. He's, I think he's just sensational. All my life, my, fav my idol was Jimmy Stewart, you know. He's still, he's in another category for me, too. And I love Jack Lemmon. I like a lot of good actors. <laughs> yes. What do you do with all your old clothes? Are you asking for yourself, sir? <laughs> You like to wear this right now? <laughs> well, come on up. <laughs> this actually, this old thing, well, <laughs> no, actually, I, I have worn this many, many times before, only uh, it was with a different jacket, and Bob Mackey made a, a new jacket for it for tonight, for this show. See how that works? I wear, I repeat a lot of clothes. Well, I'll take it secondhand. Would what? you like it? <laughs> you just don't look like the type. <laughs> Beautifully straight teeth. Have you ever worn braces? You're not lo looking up close. My teeth actually are quite crooked and yeah, protruding. But I did wear. Uh, no, I never wore braces, or they wouldn't look like this. I, I when I was uh, in my early 20s, I wore a retainer. You know, with the rubber band going across like that, and that just kind of pulled one back there like that. You know, but that was all. Yes. I want to be a singer. How do you get started? Well, you go, ma, 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 ma. I don't mean to put, you're awfully cute. And I, there is no, I cannot tell you any uh, regular way to start in show business. You ask me, you'll ask Cher, you ask anybody, you know, we'll all have different stories of how we got started. The main thing is to study and to keep trying, you know, yeah. and I certainly would uh, stay here in Hollywood or go to New York. I mean, you're not really going to do much singing professionally in the business elsewhere, you know, unless you go back to Chagrin Falls. <laughs> One of the first times I ever sang, <clears throat> I was an alto. <laughs> and I was going to do a duet <laughs> with a friend of mine, Mary Louise Cottle. And uh, she was a soprano. And we were going to do, we were gonna do, uh, oh, uh, the Whiff and Poof song, only she didn't show up. <laughs> You want to hear how I did it? Okay. Here, here was Mary Louise, supposedly. From the tables down at Maury's to the place where Louis dwells to the dear old temple bar we love so, mm, we love so. <laughs> Seeing the whipping poofs assembled with their glasses raised on on high magic of their scene has a, mm, it casts a spell. We're, mm, mm, in the audience I would love to introduce to you. I love him very much. Uh, Alan Ludden, ladies and gentlemen. Do you have a middle name? Yes, I do have a middle name. Any other questions? <laughs> it's, uh, <clears throat> 
honest. It's uh, Creighton. <laughs> well, what's so funny? <laughs> it was my mother's maiden name, C R E I G H T O N. Let's hear it for all the Creightons. <laughs> Card, you want me to do much? Gee, nobody asked me to do that so much anymore, but I'll try it, see if I can remember it. Oh! <laughs> How does someone become one of Burnett's bums? <laughs> We have to be a member of the crew. Oh, okay. Or a few other things. I'll get with you later. <laughs> so we got a big show for you, so don't go away. We'll be right back. <laughs> From Television City in Hollywood, it's the Carol Burnett Show. With Harvey Corman. Vicki Lauren. And Tim Conway. chit-chat. We gotta sort through all this stuff. Yeah. Well, Lord, that's gonna take all day. Well, listen, Ed, if you didn't want to help Mama, why didn't you say so in the first place? Well, I thought that's what I did say. I'm telling you right now, Eunice, I'm gonna get nervous if it gives me the rush act. I thought you were just gonna pick out a few souvenirs and some memorabilia. <laughs> You're not gonna go rummaging through all this. Well, Ed, neither did I, but since we are here, why don't we just make the best of it, all right? Now, Mama, where do you want us to start, huh? Well, I can't even think now. <laughs> I was hoping that Ed might be good enough to get that box from up there down for me if he wasn't in one of his almighty rushes to nowhere. It's not that I'm in a rush, exactly. I just would like to get to the bowling alley sometime before they run out of my shoe size. <laughs> Look at this old picture, Eunice. It's the whole family on Mama's front porch. Oh, my Lord. Man's got to unwind sometime. The hardware, the hardware game takes a lot out of you. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> there she is there. There's your mom, And there's, there's your daddy. Uh -huh. And there's Ellen. And this fat lady here with the bandage on her ankle, that's your, that's your Aunt Eloise. Yeah, which one is me, Mama? Which one is me, huh? Well, there you are, oh. right there, with your finger in your mouth. And look at Ellen standing there next to you, and she's the cutest little thing you ever did see. Just adorable. <laughs> Up in the attic, Ellen Angel. Why didn't you tell me Ellen was coming over here to help, too? Well, I can't keep track of everything I say. I would like it if you would please try to get along with your sister, you hear? Me? Why don't you tell her to get along with me? I'm not the snooty, stuck-up one. I can get along with anybody if she'd just let me try. looks. Isn't that always the way, Eunice, when, when you've been away from a place for a long time? Well, I wouldn't know. You see, I come over here to visit Mama fairly often, Ellen. 
And I don't come over often enough. Oh, what fun to have you telling me how to conduct my life again. <laughs> how are things in the plumbing business, Ed? I ain't in the plumbing business. I'm in hardware. Hardware, of course. I don't know why it is. Whenever I see you, I always think of septic tanks. <laughs> you to take everything out of this place that you want because I'm gonna clean everything out. Now, this is some of your old stuff. Here. Lord, Mama, I didn't want any of this junk 20 years ago. What would I want with it now? What's this? Oh, no. Oh, my Lord. Oh, Mama, this is a picture I drew of my little pet bunny rabbit, Fluffy. See, Mama, see the drawing I did? That's a rabbit? I always thought that was a kangaroo. <laughs> little pet, Fluffy. He's my very best friend. I used to come home from school every day and play with him in the backyard. Oh, Mama, surely you remember Fluffy. Yes, I remember Fluffy. She didn't take care of that rabbit. His cage was a disgrace. You could smell a damn thing all over the neighborhood. <laughs> then one day I came home from school and I ran out in the backyard to play with him and his cage was empty. He got away somehow and he disappeared and I never saw him again. Eunice, we had two months of hysterics at the time. You're not going to start up again now, are you? <laughs> you didn't take care of him and you, and you played too rough with him. Eunice, poking at him and pinching him and squeezing him and squeezing him. That poor rabbit must have run off in two different directions. <laughs> Okie dokie, here's your box. Now, is that all you need me for? I'd like to get going, if you don't mind. Ed, can't you just relax a little bit? Don't you see that Mama's enjoying this trip down memory lane? Can't we just go a little faster down memory lane? <laughs> oh, look here. This is your Aunt May stuff. Keep this for me, Thelma, and I'll come pick it up in a week or two. Then she up and died on me. <laughs> 35 years I've been stuck with this box of junk. Ed, would you please untie this knot for me? Oh, out loud. Oh, by the Andrews sisters. You got the Andrews sisters album yeah. over there? Let me look at that. Well, I was... It's whole tight here. Boy, remember how you and me and Gail down the street used to play like we was the Andrews sisters? <laughs> oh, here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Hold tight, hold tight, hold tight, hold tight, hold tight. For the yakky sack, want some seafood, mama? <laughs> oh, remember that? And we used to put on a show in the backyard, and all the neighbors would come around and watch us. I was Patty Andrews. I was the one chosen to be in the middle. Chosen to be in the middle? You threatened to punch Gail and me in the face if you weren't in the middle. That ain't true. Lord, Ed, haven't you got that knot untied yet? Don't look a gift horse in the mouth, old lady. <laughs> look at this old picture, Ellen. It's the whole family, and it's the last picture we ever took of Mama. God love her. She worked her fingers to the bones for us kids. What I want to be when I grow up <laughs> by Ellen Harper. Oh, wasn't I precious? Well, I'm sorry if I was boring you. <laughs> Mama, you don't bore me none. Why don't you tell me about it, Mama? Now, which was the aunt here that's got, that's real fat and has a bandage? I bangle? already told you once that your Aunt Eloise. You never listen to anything I tell you. All you care about is which one is me, which one is well, me. I'm sorry, I acted interested. <laughs> you be surely you have lived long enough to learn not to react to Mother. Oh, this book is something else. I would also like to be a novelist, a concert pianist, spelled with two N's, when I cute, <laughs> a beauty contest winner, and the wife of the richest man in the world. Oh, the pretensions of you. <laughs> She's so cranky that day. We were all sorry we came over. She was the one that whined and wheedled to get us all over there. Never could do anything to please that old biddy. <laughs> Ed, I could have gone downtown and back in the time it's taken you to fill with that night. Take Harry Haldini and untie this thing. Man, got that sucker now. <laughs> Never could do anything to please her. I remember one time I put a stamp on an envelope for her. I didn't even do that right. 
Neither <laughs> one of you got any use for this god-awful thing. Well, let me see that. Well, that, that looks like it could be a Tiffany lampshade. Well, isn't that just May all over, loud and gaudy? <laughs> well, I'll bet it is. I'll bet anything. I... Well, right there, Tiffany and company. Oh, that'll look stunning in my dining room bay window. Well, if you say so, I wouldn't keep my garbage in it. You take it. <laughs> well, let's not bother to ask Eunice if she might want it. Wouldn't help anyway, because you already gave it to her, didn't you? Eunice, if you... Stop all the songs and dances. If you want this thing, just say so. Well, all right, yes, I do. I want it. Yeah, we got a dining room window. <laughs> well, then, I... Guess we just have to let Mother decide, oh, won't well, we? you just stop all this silly fussing. I give the lamp to Ellen, and that's the way Aunt May would have wanted it, so that's that. <laughs> Aunt May would have wanted it that way? Aunt May, how do you know what the hell she want? What's she doing? Is she up here hoovering around the attic like Casper the ghost, telling you, whispering in your ear, what, that Ellen gets it? We do not need blasphemy, Eunice, for pity's sake. There's plenty of other lamps up here. Here, take this one. Now you're even. Oh, that's a stuff. <laughs> hey, I like this. I think I can fix this thing up pretty good. Oh, I need some new wire. And I found a gold mine over here. Look at this. All this fan needs is a new blade. And look uh, here, this scale here. All it needs is a new pointer. I'll tell you, I find a gold mine here. I could sell some of this stuff at the store. You could. Well, then in that case, we can split the profits 50-50. The hell you say? <laughs> I mean, I'm the one that's going to fix it. whose property was this in the first Would place, you Dad? you just knock it off, Mama? You know he can't even get 25 cents for that stuff. He can't even sell the new stuff he's got in the store. You know him. He's just going off the deep end again. <laughs> I don't mind you putting me down around the house. But don't you put me down in front of your relative. Oh, put don't you my lid on it. I had to listen to this the last time we were together. Wait, now, just be careful with that. You're going to break it, Ellen. Mama, I am not five years old, and I will thank you not to talk to me the way you do to these two. Now, Ellen, we must learn not to react to Mama. Oh, all my life, all I ever got from you two was disrespect. And I see nothing has changed. Don't fret, Mama. I'm sorry, honey. I'll be careful. I think I'll just take this... China along be perfect for the bridge club. You sailing off with that China, too? I got an idea, Ellen. Why don't you just hire a van and have them come over here and cart off the entire attic for you, huh? You know, it is a very ugly thing to see such pettiness and jealousy within one's own family. You got a whole closet just chock full of China. I don't even have one dish without a crack in it. You already got that Tiffany lamp. You do not need that China. And who do you entertain? I mean, just how many big parties do you and the plumber here give in that little cracker box you live in? And you just lay off for our house. We all know we live in a dump. Now, we... just a minute. <laughs> Shut up. But I'm here to tell you right now that the world is sick and tired of hearing you go on and on about that two-story job that you live in with its built-in stoves and its sliding door closets and its step-down den and its double toilet paper dispenser. <laughs> I mean, the world would think you live in the Taj Mahal instead of a two-bit track house in a snooty part of a hick town. Eunice. And while we're on the subject, just how many millions of bucks is that pipsqueak of a husband got that you married, huh? Oh, little sister, dear, if I had dragged in to marry what you did, I would stay off the subject of husband. Oh, yeah. Oh, Lord, Lord, how much does a man have to take? I can take one of them sometimes. And even I can even take two of them after I've had a couple of belts. But I'm telling you right now, I can't take three, you damn dragons. <laughs> all this titching. Oh, shut up, Mama. You thrive on it. You're always deliriously happy when anybody else is miserable. You always have been. Well, let me tell you something, Eunice. I think it's time you knew. You remember that Friday that Fluffy the Rabbit disappeared? Well, toots, that wasn't fried chicken we had for supper that night. <laughs> <laughs> Mama, you Tell me that isn't so. Oh, for pity's sake, Eunice, how the hell you expect me to remember what we had for supper 30 years ago? <laughs> Look, Miss Pickle Puss. I'm 
father drummed it in me never to hit a woman that wasn't manly, but in your case, I'm gonna throw manly. Let's down the tube. Oh, knock it off, Ed. Everybody knows you're scared to take on a 10-year-old boy. Murderers! <laughs> Have you taken a good long look at that pasty face pants that you hooked up with? No. Cannibals! <laughs> We're not gonna ever hear the end of this. Eunice, will you look at it this way? If we hadn't eaten a damn thing up, he'd be dead by now of old age. <laughs> oh, the deceit! Just how many other lies did you tell me when I was a little kid, Mama? How many other ones? Oh, my Lord, I gotta review my entire life! Well, I sure do hate to miss that, but I've got a luncheon. <laughs> Goodbye, Mama, it's been swell. I'll pick up the china tomorrow. Look out, Ellen. That lamp is gonna split. <laughs> See, I told you he was gonna drop that. But one lucky thing, you still got your china here. Do you know you are cuckoo? They're gonna put you away one day, little sister, and I'm gonna be more than happy to sign the papers. And that goes for the plumber, too. <laughs> Eunice, was that really necessary? Shut up, you rabbit killer. <laughs> Ed, I want you to take every one of these boxes down, because I'm going to go through them. I want you to know that I am fed up with being ordered or... I said take all of these boxes down. <laughs> uh, I think I'll get those boxes. <laughs> I'm going to find me a lampshade, Mama. I'm going to find me some china, Mama. Yes, I think maybe I can have I'm the rest of this I'm going to find me all kinds of goodies, Mama, that belong to me. It's a party. What happened? 
happened to you? What do you mean? <laughs> You've changed. Well, a lot of water's gone under the bridge. <laughs> yeah, I can see it. <laughs> oh, boy. You know, water don't bother me none. It's when I try to eat spare ribs. <laughs> oh, Leticia, you're a caution. You always were. You haven't changed a bit. Still have your sense of humor. <laughs> yeah, well, I wish I could say the same thing for my hair. Huh? My hair. Ah, uh, of course I care. I'm glad it was you showed up. <laughs> It was always you and me, Letitia. Sure was. Will you ever forget that big, I say, will you ever forget that big game? The one with Southern Tech, the one we won? <laughs> oh, boy, you said it. We won, oh, all right. Oh, <laughs> darn right. I mean, without us, they're cheering them on. Yeah. <laughs> that touchdown in the last three seconds? No way. Are you ready? Ready. Give me a W. Give me a wax. Give me a H. Give me a hat. Give me a wax. A hatchy, zip, get a boom, ba, wump, em, stomp, em. Give me a wump, ba, whack, em, sack, em. Give me a wax. We're gonna win. Sheep, we're gonna win. Sheep, we're gonna win. in my side. Oh, I'm you know, I guess we're not as young as we used to be. Huh? I said I... When my teeth are at rest in a glass by my bed and my hair lies somewhere in a drawer <laughs> then the world doesn't seem like a very nice place Not a very nice place anymore But I take out my teeth From the glass by my bed And my hair from a drawer in the hall Still the world doesn't seem like a very nice place not a very nice place at all but i put in my teeth and i put on my hair and a strange thing occurs when i do for my teeth start to feel like my very own teeth and my hair like my very own too the soap. My heart is full of hope again. Again. I'm ready, ready to, to begin, begin again. Feeling like I've just begun. Now I'm not afraid to raise the window shade and fade brooches, my rings and my pearls and my pins. And as the new day approaches, as the new day begins, I'm ready to begin again. Looking fresh and bright, I try. Must 
Let's try that sucker again. <laughs> I beg your pardon, but could you help me? I don't know. What's wrong? Well, you see, I just came from shopping, and the mm -hmm. salesman told me that this is a counterfeit $20 bill. You're kidding. Hmm. I, I don't know where I got it, you know, and I know I have to turn it back in, but maybe you, you have an idea. Should I turn it into the FBI or to a bank or the police or what? I, I don't know what to do. No, you turn it into the police. That's as good a place as any, Thank but you. I'll tell you something. I want some advice. Uh, I wouldn't turn that in if I were you. Oh, no, I have to. No, no, you know what happens to those things when you turn them in? Well, I turn them in, and they take it, and then they give me a good one in return. Wrong, no. They take your 20, punch a hole in it, bam, you're out 20 bucks. <laughs> I don't know what to do. I want to do the right thing. Sure, you want to do the right thing? I'll tell you something. Lady, it's a dog-eat-dog -dog world. See, somebody pass that on to you, right? Yeah. Pass it on to somebody else. What? That's all, sure. Nobody's going to know the difference. Bartender? Yeah. yeah. I want to uh, give a little lady here another drink, please. Sure. Yeah. Do you have any chips? No, just the popcorn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be 85 cents. Right, take it right out of there. Out of 20. All right. Oh, hi, Kerrigan. How are you? Oh, I'm fine, but it's oh. awfully hot out there. Could you uh, give me a glass of water? Glass of water, sure. Yeah, right up. <clears throat> Excuse me. I, I'll uh, pay for this in cash. I, oh. I got some change here. I didn't realize this. Uh, you would <laughs> break this, so I just uh, pay for that. It's right there. Here you go. I have 85. Thank right. you. Right. Yeah. Uh, that drink's on me. You just. Yeah, I, keep I that. don't want that. That's counter. Put you in there! <laughs> uh, you know, uh, on the uh, CO. Yeah, well, uh, what's going on here? Huh? Nothing. Nothing. No, I just, uh, I was, uh, trying to give this lady, uh, 20 bucks. All right, young lady. Now, 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 we have laws against that kind of behavior. I'm afraid I'm gonna have to run you in. But I, I, I was, I, I, uh, run me in? He, he's, he's trying to pass me. We got the on the, <clears throat> on the, uh, no, uh, this is 20 I owe her. So I'm just trying to give it right back to her. That's all. It's just yes, Now, is, is that right? Uh, well, yes, what it is was I, I, I gave him this 20 and I wanted four fives in return. <laughs> is that right? No. Um, <laughs> see, uh, okay, uh, well, I, uh, well, all right, which is it? It's, uh, <clears throat> yeah, well, yeah, sure, I, I'd give you <clears throat> four fives for that. That's a good deal. Sure, I, uh, there you go. <laughs> four fives right there, and I... Take this to be now mine. Okay, right. okay. Right. Hey, uh, thank you, Joy. See you later. Right. All right, Kevin. Okay. Right. Just, uh... <laughs> okay, give me the fives back. Why should I? <laughs> why should you? They're my fives, that's why. No, they're my fives now. You made change for a 20. <laughs> that 20's no good. Well, you told me to pass it on to somebody, and that's what I did. <laughs> Well, not me, some other moron. <laughs> oh, God, I'm with the hey, 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 what's going on here? What's going on? This lady just ripped me off. Ripped you off? How could she yeah. rip you off? I'll tell you how she ripped me off. I gave her four fives, and she gives me a 20. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the problem, Einstein? <laughs> the problem is that 20, that's the problem. Is that the 20 you were gonna give me? That's right. What's wrong with it? Uh, so I see a, that just thing. Just a 20, that's all. It's just a... Hey, this is a phony. What? Hey. Uh, you better let me see those four fives he gave you. I'm not trying to pull around here. I'm not trying to pull around. Let's take it easy. Just let me see the fives. Let me see it. Fuck. Uh, Here's the other one. These are phony, too. They are phony. <laughs> hey, I'm gonna, I better call Carrie. Whoa, wait, 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 wait. wait a minute. Oh, OK. Oh, wait a minute. I didn't uh, realize that. around here. 20 was some question, but the fives, I didn't uh, how I ever. Uh, let me just square what this up. What you got there? Well, what do you have? You have $40, so you got 30, uh, 35, 30, $37. 37? All right, but that ain't 40. Well, I always got a watch. Got a oh, watch. Come on. Don't. Now, come on. Oh, come just, on. Will you let him go? Don't do that. All right. Get out of here. Well, the lady just get out of here. Well, okay. Don't come back here again. Right. We don't right. want your kind around here. All right. Okay. Just get out. Boy. 
<laughs> Not a bad take for one day, huh, Sally? Man couldn't ask for a better partner than you. Hey, come on in, Salvatore. Here we go. How did we bring that thing? Oh, look at that. Every year from 1907 through 1931, Florence Ziegfeld produced a new Ziegfeld Follies, featuring stars like Go Nora Bays, Eva Tangue, the Dolly Sisters, Fanny Bryce, Will Rogers, Leon Errol, W.C. Fields, and of course, the glorified Ziegfeld girls. Tonight, we take you back about 60 years to one of those glorious opening nights. <laughs> Beautiful tunes, and furthermore, five beautiful ladies are like five beautiful tunes. It follows that six beautiful ladies must be like six beautiful tunes. Something there, do things with their bodies, do things with their hair. They try to deceive you with the clothes that they wear. Not Zizi. <laughs> Not Zizi. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing, nothing but me. This part, that part, sin part, fat part. Definitely Z-Z. May we, the arms, the knees, the zones, the Z's. All these are Z's. Z's. The shin, the neck, la bouche, le bec. All these are Z's. Z's. The songs, the fires, the soul, the desire. They belong to Z's too.
Step at a cat. <laughs> cat only a body can do. My wings I can flap, and if you all clap, I'll now do my dance for you. Tree 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 tree. Swallow a swallow, the bodies all follow everywhere I fly. I fly to the east, I fly to the west, and when I am pooped, I rest in my nest. <laughs> On top of a pillow, I follow as happy as I can be. I flitter, I fly. All over the sky, a swallow, a swallow, that's me. <laughs> I fly over clouds like an angel. I warble, I bill, I coo. I land on a Stand on one leg. Hoo hoo hoo! I just laid an egg for you. Stars are bright. I take a little ride. Swing me nightly, swing me light. 
get started and before you know it comes the time we have to say so long good night thank you Policeman was played by Brad Trumbull. The preceding program was recorded before a live audience. This is your announcer speaking.